Using a full ROM set makes setting up MAME really easy, but leaves thousands of games on your hard drive taking up 70 to 80 gigabytes of space. Loading only the games you want saves space, but can be hard to get working. So let me show you how it's done. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. Now MAME is probably the best known arcade game emulator available today. It literally lets you play any arcade game ever written and it runs on Windows, Mac OS, Linux or Android devices. Um, so you simply install the software, load in some game ROMs and you're ready to play. Well, at least that's what's supposed to happen. Now, in reality, Getting your MAME installation set up and able to play the arcade games that you want can be quite a challenge. MAME ROMs don't work the same as other emulators. You can't just find a cartridge ROM and expect it to work straight away. So in this video, I'll cover the main points of how MAME ROMs are organized and then show you how to reliably get any game you want up and running. Now, I have produced a few videos showing you how to do this the easy way, and I'll put links to those in the video description. But all of those ones involve downloading and installing a complete ROM set. And this does take up quite a lot of hard disk space, and it floods your emulator with around 3,000 to 4,000 arcade games. And, and many of those um, will just sit unplayed on your computer forever. So if you're making a streamlined or a compact game list, then we need to work out how to get around the complete ROM set and start downloading only the files that we want. Let's start by having a look at how MAME ROM sets actually work. So MAME has a much harder task to perform than normal console emulators. If you think about any normal game console, for instance the Nintendo Entertainment System, there is just one set of hardware. So the emulator takes care of modelling everything inside this NES box. You then just need to give it the code stored on the cartridge or perhaps a CD-ROM and then everything matches up and you're ready to play. Arcade cabinets are very different. They are basically custom computer consoles for each individual game. If we take a single cabinet, it will contain a number of circuit boards, each with its own processor system for the sound, graphics, etc. Each of these boards in turn then needs to be emulated in software and will require one or more code files just for that single module. So MAME has to be aware of what parts are needed to make any one cabinet and put all those pieces together with their software to build the emulation system for that single game. So hopefully you're starting to get the idea of how complex this process is. If we start looking at an individual game, for, for example Donkey Kong, we can download a copy of the game ROM. Now as usual I'm not able to tell you directly where to get hold of these files due to YouTube rules. Now previously you would simply have gone to the MU Paradise website and downloaded any game you wanted from there. But, but a few years back they were forced to disable their download library and it's a great shame that this hasn't been fixed as it was a fantastic resource for all your emulation needs. But looking at the contents of the ROM we can see there are a number of emulator files inside. Each of these relates to a piece of circuitry inside the cabinet along with any firmware or software it needs to operate. You can also see files that will probably relate to the game code itself. Now MAME will put all of these together to build the Donkey Kong machine in memory and let you play the game. To test this file, we need to first install a copy of MAME. So you just need to download the self-extracting installation file, save it to a folder and run it. This will then create the emulator files and folders on your hard drive. We can then install this single game into MAME by just dropping the ROM file into the ROMs folder inside your MAME installation location. We can then run the MAME program file and we should see our game listed in the available game section. 
double click it, and we should get the original code version of Donkey Kong running right on our PC. Now this of course is the ideal situation for us. One ROM file and we get the game we want, and that's great. But now let's look at another 80s classic, Pac-Man by Midway. Again, we can get hold of a game ROM and have a look inside. And this time we see another range of files, most relating to Pac-Man, which, which all makes sense. So let's load this into MAME and see what happens. So again, MAME recognises the game, but when we try to play it, we get an error saying that we are missing some of the required files. And this brings us to the first complication with MAME games, clones. Now just a point while we're here, I'm obviously running this all from directly inside MAME. If you're using a front end such as LaunchBox or RetroPie, you won't get these error messages popping up. You might just get a black screen pop up for a second, or just nothing happens. And that does signify then that that MAME game isn't set up correctly. So in the arcade world, not all arcade game cabinets are totally unique. Naturally, manufacturers tried to reuse components across cabinets, or even use the same cabinet with a different game running. Now Midway's Pac-Man is actually a rebranded version of the original Namco game, Puckman. It's exactly the same game, just with the names of the ghost rewritten in English. Now in MAME, we use the term parent to signify an original game cabinet, and a clone to show that a game is using a modified version of that cabinet. So the game file I've got here is for the clone and not the parent. My clone ROM doesn't contain all the emulator files for the hardware inside the cabinet. So this is where we need a little knowledge of how MAME ROM sets work. So the ideal situation would be where every game ROM contains all the files needed to run the game. Now these do exist, and they're generally called non-merged, or some people call them fully non-merged ROM sets. Now as every emulator file that is needed is simply duplicated for every game that needs it, these ROM sets can get very large. But if you want to easily get hold of a single game, search around for these. Now merge sets place all the files needed for the parent game in the same ROM set along with all the files for each clone game. So a single file may contain a large number of games, but all the files needed for each game is present in the single ROM file. Now generally, the whole set of games will be listed as the parent game, with some front ends being able to pick out individual clones through further menu settings. Now split sets are what we've already come across, and these just place the files unique to that game in the ROM file. If you want to run a clone, you also need to get hold of the parent ROM file and any other associated files that may contain required code and hardware definitions. So the Pac-Man file I've already downloaded is a split file with just the Midway Pac-Man files. To get this to run, I need to find out what other ROM files I need. Now luckily, there is an amazing website that will tell you exactly what you need. And this is called the Arcade Database. So if we visit the site, we can go to the Games section and search for Pac-Man Midway. This will bring up a list of games, one of which is the Midway version that we're trying to install. So if we look at the detail for that game, we can see that this is listed as a game file, but that it is also a clone. And a bit further down we get to the main data, which tells us the official MAME file name for this game. So it's going to be P-A-C-M-A-N, and then followed by whatever archive extension that we're using, um, usually pacman.zip. And then of course there are some other game details there as well. But if I scroll down even further, we can see the ROM set file hierarchy for this game. So this one is telling us that Pac-Man is actually a clone of Puckman, which we've already worked out, and that we need to get hold of the Puckman.zip or Puckman.7z etc file. So let's go and get hold of that. Here I've downloaded a copy into my MAME ROMs folder, and we can then have a look at the contents to confirm that there is a different set of files. So, 
If I now boot up MAME, we'll see that we also have the Puckman game available for play. But if we go back and try and start our original Pac-Man Midway version, we now get the fully working US release version. So MAME knows that the files it needs are going to be in the Puckman.zip file, so it simply uses those to fill in the missing Pac-Man code. So that was quite a bit of work for one game, and the obvious way around this then is to try and avoid split sets and just use either non-merged, which are the easiest to use but the hardest to find, or then merge sets, which are usually the most common ones around. So let's try Pac-Man again, but this time using a merge set. So I've downloaded here the Puckman merge set archive file. And if we look inside this, you'll see all the files for the parent game, together with all the clones. Um, and again, there are quite a lot of different clones that are included in this merged file. But if we copy that into our main ROMs folder, and here I've already taken out the two files that we downloaded previously, and then if I boot up MAME, you'll see that we have Puckman appearing in our list of available games. Now that's great and has given us a really easy way to play Puckman, but we really want to play the US version Pac-Man. Now there are a number of ways of getting to that, so we can go to the clone section and find it in there, but it would be much easier if this was listed as a separate game in our available games folder. And that's especially true if we were using some sort of front end package where we would want that game listed out in the main interface. Now, MAME is very clever when it comes to finding missing files. It knows that parent games usually hold any missing code from the clones. So we have a parent archive that matches the file name we found in the arcade database, and that's our puckman.zip. If we now create a dummy archive file called pacman.zip in the MAME ROMs folder, it will think that this is the midway Pacman version. So remember that pacman.zip is the file name that specifies the version that we want to run. Now you, know, you do also have to make sure that this is a real archive file, rather than just creating some sort of text file and renaming it. We can then run MAME, and we get the Midway version now listed under our available games. When MAME tries to open the game, it will find all the files missing, and then proceed to search for them in the parent ROM file. Now of course that's where all the files are, so our game boots up fine and we now have the US version of Pac-Man. So we're almost there now, there's only another couple of issues which you will probably butt up against. So let's try one more game, and this time we'll use one of my favourites which is Metal Slug. So again I'm going to download a merged game ROM, and I'm installing it into my main ROMs folder. But when I try and run this then, I get the same missing files error. So if I now go out and check the arcade database to see what files I need, um, it does tell me that my mslug.zip is a parent game, so it should run by itself. But if I scroll down to the ROM set information, we'll see that this game requires a BIOS ROM. Now, now some arcade cabinets used a common main processing core, and Metal Slug is based on a Neo Geo cabinet. So we need to get hold of the BIOS code for the Neo Geo system. And again, the arcade database will tell us exactly which file we need, and in this case then it's neogeo.zip. So if I go and find that file and install it into my MAME's ROM folder, I can then boot back up MAME, and this time if we try and run Metal Gear, we get the game coming up and running. So the basic takeaway here is that although we are using a merged file, or even if we were using some non-merged files, um, there are certain bits of code and other associated data which isn't always stored inside those archives. And again, we're seeing here we've got some BIOS files, but there are things like CHD files, uh, which are basically sort of data CDs and stuff used by some cabinets, and, and so on. So, so do make sure you always go back and check the arcade database if you're having some problems getting a game to run, and that should tell you which of these other files you need to go and find. As a final point then, you might have noticed that I've been using version 0.184 of MAME, and this is actually quite an old version. 
So let's update my installation to the latest 0.251 to take advantage of the latest developments. So I'm now in version 0.251 and all I've done is to copy over my game and BIOS ROMs from my 0.184 installation. So let's give those a try and see what happens. So first of all, we we'll give Donkey Kong a go. And as you can see, that's all okay and loads the game up, um, no problem at all. But now if we come back to our menu and try Metal Slug, we find that we get our missing files error again. And this is even though we've got both the game and BIOS ROMs loaded into the installation. And this really is the last piece of the puzzle in MAME Gaming. Uh, you need to make sure that you match your ROM file version and your MAME version. So the files I've been downloading have mostly come from MU Paradise. And if you check their download pages, you'll see they generally show version 0.184 game files. And that's why I started the video initially using that version. So if you match the ROM and the MAME versions, um, you're much more likely to get the games to work. So to get my 0.251 version working, I'm going to need to go and find and install 0.251 compatible game and BIOS ROMs. As you've seen, some of the older versions will work, but not all of them. So I've taken you through some of the main pitfalls that you'll come across. But here are my tips for making this whole process as easy as possible. So first of all, find a ROM set that you want to use and make a note of its version number. Now there are many places which give you access to the game files without having to download everything. Next, install the main version that matches your ROM set. If it's not the latest version, go to the previous version page in MAME and just scroll down until you find the one you need. Then check the arcade database to find out what files you need for your game. And then simply download those files and put them in your main ROMs folder. And you should now have a working game. So hopefully that will let you download and install just the main games that you want. Without having to go through that whole process of downloading the full ROM set and filling your hard drive or your SD card with lots of games that you're really not ever going to play. So if you have found this useful, do please click that like button and subscribe to the channel. That will then keep you informed of all of my upcoming videos. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.